Today, I'm gonna break down how to get your first brand partnership as a music or content creator. Let's go. What's up, y'all? My name is Nico, a DIY artist who uses this platform to encourage, inspire, educate, and of course, entertain aspiring artists to go from zero to one, taking their first step into launching their music career while sharing my music and journey along the way. So a few years ago, I secured my first brand partnership. It changed a lot of things for me. I thought you needed like over a million or at least over 100,000 followers on any and all platforms in order to secure that brand partnership. But interestingly enough, companies started to gather data and realize realizing that micro influencers or nano influencers were actually equally if not more beneficial for their brands in terms of conversion or having people consider using their product or service for many reasons. Once I locked in my first brand partnership opportunity, I began to realize this. Now in one of my recent videos, I shared how much money I made in 2021 as a content creator. And as you saw in that video, the bulk of my revenue as a content creator solely came from brand partnerships. Now at the time, and including up until this video has been recorded, I have substantially less followers than most of the other influencers I've followed for a very long time. Way less than 100,000, including my YouTube channel, which at the time of this recording sits at about 2,800 or so subscribers. Now there are a few few things that I think helped me in securing that first brand partnership opportunity and that have increased my chances in securing additional opportunities as well. So I'm going to go ahead and share those with you. A quick disclaimer, I can't guarantee results and I definitely understand that there's a factor that's outside of my control, whether you call it luck or timing or what have you, that contributed to me being able to secure some of these brand partnership opportunities. So keep that in mind. Now, the first thing that I want you to pay attention to is your brand. Work on your branding. What does this mean? I would say focus on your audience define who your audience is or who you want it to be. Of course, you may not necessarily know who your audience is at the time that you start your music or content creation journey. But as you start exploring different types of content and as you start putting stuff out there, you'll begin to notice some reoccurring people that view your channel, whether it's the first 10 people that always visit and comment. You can kind of tell the type of people that actually watch your content, what they like and what they don't. And of course, there's a lot of algorithmic changes that come into play and you certainly have to have a component of enjoying what you do in order to be able to continuously do it at a sustainable scale. Not all should be dictated by the audience, but there should be that mutual communication in a sense where you receive feedback from them and then in turn you create content centered around them. Now you may not start with the best of cameras or even the best of lighting or audio equipment and that's totally fine. I remember my first camera being a point and shoot camera and I think at the time I was recording uh, with a little computer mic that I had gotten from Walmart, maybe less than 20 bucks or what have you. But this is where I started and I started creating the habit of recording myself, at least my music at the time, every single day. So between having a consistent image, somewhat of a consistent message, targeting somewhat of a consistent audience, and at the same time doing it in a relatively consistent fashion, I think those couple things will certainly help your brand appeal. A few of the tools that I recommend looking into are a good video editing program. Most MacBooks come with iMovie, so you could definitely start there and again, look into increasing your quality by purchasing other video editing programs like Final Cut Pro or even subscribing to Adobe Creative Suite and getting the Adobe Premiere Pro. Or you can even look into outsourcing your editing and having a video editor do that if you think they're going to save you time and money by doing so. In addition, I would look into using something like Canva Pro. Now, while they're not sponsoring this video, Canva Pro is the paid version of Canva. And essentially what Canva is, is a all-in-one kind of design platform. You can even do some like video editing, light video editing for your uh, like title cards or your titles, maybe your intro to your YouTube channel, giving yourself a nice, clean aesthetic, consistent aesthetic based off of a specific color palette or uh, even just a certain look that you want to go for. The important part is to try to be as professional as you can with what you have. But again, focus on your branding. Number two, much like I did in my first point, promote products that you currently use. If you see the neon sign that I have up here, my NTS media logo, I purchased it from a company called Sketch and Etch. At the time, I loved their product. I'd seen it on different other YouTubers and, and people sharing their content online. And I thought, man, how cool would it be to have my own neon sign? Of course, it was an investment. It wasn't cheap, but once I got it, man, I was so happy that I got it. And I had a lot of people complimenting my sign and asking me, yo, Nico, where did you get that sign? So I actually reached out to the company and I said, hey, do you guys have an affiliate 
program so that I can share this great product that I personally have and people can get a discount at the same time. They answered back and they said, yes, we do have an affiliate program. I signed up. You guys get the benefit of getting 15% off your own customized neon sign uh, while also supporting my channel. Link in the description below. Research companies that you already use. See if they have affiliate programs. Find ways that you can get involved sharing their products or promoting their services. See ways that you could be creative at integrating product placement or service placement into your content and then also keeping track of how many people actually purchase the product and how happy they are or satisfied they are with the product because this will help you with step number three. Step number three is look into whoever may be running their affiliate program or partnership opportunities. Oftentimes they may be one and the same. You may reach out to them and say, hey, I love the product. You know, I've been an affiliate for some time now. Here's some of my results, or maybe they already know about that, which is kind of how my first brand partnership opportunity came to be. They kept track of how many clicks I was getting and that sort of thing. So they reached out and say, hey, can we sponsor one of your videos? So you can utilize that data to make a case for why you would be a great, not just affiliate, but a great partner or somebody that would uh, deserve a sponsorship opportunity or somebody that you wanna create a long lasting partnership opportunity with. Now that you have the data and you have a great branding behind your content, you can actually make a case for that partnership opportunity. Now, this may not always be available. And of course, with bigger companies, it's a little bit harder to track down who may be a potential partnership manager or sponsorship manager. Creating great rapport with whoever it is that you're speaking to, whether it's a customer or service representative, a generic email address that you're getting emails from, whoever it is, treat everyone with respect. Be mindful of their time. Don't always be seeking out things from them, but see ways that you could serve them first. Again, keeping track of your affiliates and that sort of thing will definitely make the case for why you would be an asset to that company. Don't berate people with spammy emails or that sort of thing. Make it natural. Be respectful. Be courteous of people's time. I don't want you guys spamming people or anything like that, but I do want to make sure that this creator ecosystem for DIY artists content creators thrives, especially for those of us who come from communities that oftentimes don't have opportunities like this present themselves. We have to know what's going on out there in the world and we won't know unless somebody shares it. So that's why I wanted to share that information with you guys. But again, be mindful, be respectful, be professional to the best of your ability as you would with creating your own content. So those are the three tips that I wanted to share with you guys. Let me know what you think in the comments section below. I'd love to hear success stories of yours. If you've had an opportunity to partner up with a brand that you've been following or using for some time. How did you get that partnership opportunity? Was it something that I mentioned here? Much love to all the awesome brands that have partnered with me over the last two years. I'm very humbled at the fact. So much love to you guys for making it happen. For my DIY artists on the Patreon, patreon.com forward slash Nico Santana. I'll share more insights with you guys there. So if you're interested in joining my little community, sign up for the DIY artist here. There's limited spots available. Much love guys. Thanks for watching till the end. Feel free to follow me on Instagram. Subscribe down below and hasta la próxima. Peace.